Hi guys. Was it getting me? Um, let me know how the uh, mic volume is. I adjusted some uh, some settings and bumped up the uh, the gain on my microphone. It's a little bit louder this time. Although for whatever reason, it looks like my noise gate filter uh, needs to be uh, a little bit. So I have to play with uh, play with that. So hi guys, hi Brittany, hi Sonia. I know you said you're AF uh, AFK, but you'll be as our well and a good weekend. Um, I feel like I was moderately. And I'm trying to get into the, like, I don't know, like, I'm trying to get into better, like, weekend not as much um, channel-related stuff, especially since facing a bit on Saturday. Hey, KP, how are you? Um... So I painted this weekend, like mostly like for myself. I shared what I was working on um, on the community tab. Um, so that's a, a long term project. So there may be some uh, videos for that down the road, but um, I'm not going to do a video for every single page, and then I'll be able to finish it, and then I'll do like a sketchbook tour. But I'm having a hard time being productive um like largely working at the uh at the house so i've looked into some alternate like options there's some um yeah i can't talk hi brooke how are you there's some places local that do um like office rentals including um like drop in like you uh rent an office for like a couple days a month but it's kind of out of my budget right now and um I'm not sure that I'm like I, I mean it's like in my brain I'm like at that point because I need to have at least like a day or something where I'm working but I'm not at my desk like I'm not at the house I keep getting wrapped up in like just all the minutia of like house type type stuff hey kinkin how are you welcome on in uh just getting started so i'm chit-chatting for a little bit before i jump over into our project for the day um so i don't know i um obviously i can't like record at the library but i'm um contemplating trying to get all of my recording done earlier in the week and then having like one day where I just go to the library and um my editing or if I'm working on any like digital for a project I can sit there and work on my um uh work on my um my digital stuff so I don't know. I might pick a day of the week where I go spend a few hours just sitting at the library, not not at my not at my desk. Um, but so I haven't started working on it yet. Uh, this weekend's video, I should be able to get back into our um, mythographic magical earth series. Um, I'm hoping to wrap that up um, within like one or two more videos. And then um, I have some ideas for videos for April, kind of um, based off of some of the suggestions I got over on the community tab, and also trying to tie in like spring and and whatnot. Um, so I'm kind of in the planning phases of that. Um, Only Book Club comes back next Tuesday. Uh, we we've talked about it before. Um, but the Lonely Book Club was a series that I started like way, way back. There's only two episodes of it on the channel. And then I kind of like lost my brain a little bit about how I was how I was going to manage things. Um, 
But it was basically where uh, I dug through my books and found something that had been sitting abandoned and sad on my shelf that I'd either never colored in or um, started a project in it and then it just got tucked away. So we're bringing that back. Uh, I'm going to be doing it live this this time. Um, and I think we'll do uh, every other month, the first stream of the month will be a meeting of the Lonely Book Club. Um, more info to come on that, but uh, if we're starting it in April, that will be next day. Um, yeah, that's really like all I have, like channel channel news wise. So let me go ahead and uh, flip it to the top down and a bit about what we're gonna work on today. Okay, so. We're going to be working in, this is, uh, I did a little research on, on the book. Um, I do not know how to pronounce the author's name, um, and I don't want to butcher it, the title. Uh, this is a Korean coloring book, and it's based on a webtoon uh, series. Uh, it's called the Omaris Jam Jam Coloring Book, and it's basically... Um, Full of just food and deliciousness, and um, there's some of the comics in here. So I kind of happened across this uh, on Etsy, um, just as a like I don't even know how I how I found it, but I love books like this, uh, especially if there's food. And uh, since I have my watercolors out, I thought. That um, that we would work in this book today, and I picked an image. I've got to crack the spine on this though. Trying to get my desk organized here, so so um. This is the image that we are going to work on today. And I've got my one of my self-curated watercolor palettes. Um I don't remember if I I think this is all of I think this palette is all Daniel um Daniel Smith, my smaller palette. And I might need to dip into um, my bigger palette for a couple things, potentially pull out, um, I might need to actually, like, dig into my, my stash and pull out a couple colors, but for now, I think I can do it with what, uh, what I have here. Put that there so I can see. Don't you know what's in this palette? An ad for Terra chips. Yeah, we're um fully fully monetized now, so. Ads. Right, I haven't actually that's not true because I just did watercolor. I feel like I need some paper underneath this so in case it gets through. Although I am gonna try and be careful of that, so just a second. Uh, I'm going to start with the background here, and I might to go have a bigger brush in here that I can. Oh, 
Um, let's switch to. That's why I don't use this. That's why I don't use brush for water. Could just switch to a flat brush. Although this paper seems Corbin have to work kind of Yeah, I can do that. Let's try try this one. Uh, much better. Her palette is kind of my way, and I can go in with a um with a softer brush, with a round brush, smooth harsh lines out. But uh, this is um this is all Daniel uh Daniel Smith. So I have two palettes that I put together um, that I like to work out of. And then if I need to grab like extra colors, I have my tubes that I'll, I'll pull out. But this is all Daniel Smith. And then my other palette is kind of a mixture of I think Windsor and Newt. And then I'm using a uh, combination of brushes from different different brands i have one of my uh princeton snap brushes out here but i really don't like their larger brushes or uh, watercolor the smaller ones are okay for detail work but and this is a um one half inch uh princeton neptune i'm using right now uh i haven't had any issues with any of my uh my daniel smith paints This paper I'm going to have to be careful with because it's not like water.
But yeah, I've been using uh, the Daniel for a while now, and I haven't had any with um with them. What uh, kind of problems are you uh, referring to out of curiosity? Uh, one of the watercolor paints. Do you have a uh, a specific paint? You know which uh, specific paint that was. Hey, Stardust, how are you? Probably a moon glow. Yeah. Um, that would be my guess. And like that, that was not a secret. Like I, I knew that, um, moon glow was considered a uh, fugitive when I bought it. I mean, you're going to find controversy pretty much around every, like, any brand that's out there. People are going to have things to, things to say or that they don't like or that the company did this and wasn't transparent about that if, is what it is. But, like, that's not enough for me to, like, not use Hey, Mrs. French, how are you? Hey, T, how are you? Sorry, I, uh... What, controversy? Uh, we're just talking about, um... So, I'm using Daniel Smith paints today, and, um... 
talking about some of the paints not being like super light fast, but like that's that's pretty much like any uh paint is going to have colors that aren't light fast. And I think uh, Sonia can probably answer this. And it tends to be, um, that tends to be pretty common with like purples and reds, right? I've heard that uh, purples especially tend to be harder to, to make like truly light fast. Prime attack thing is shady, but some of the colors are still. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know anything about about Prime Attack. Yeah, this paper is um not what I thought it was going to uh to be here. I don't think I'm going to be. To blend these edges out without peeling her so that's a little a little disappointing i should have known that i should have tested this before we did this hang on i'll prepare my lecture The Primatag paints weren't made with real gemstones. I mean, they um, they market them as. I'm not like not aware of. I don't really want to dry this. And try and go back in because that's just going to make this even more difficult. Different to So the background on this is going to look kind of junky, just because. Don't think I'm going to be able to get all of this bit out without ruining the paper. I'm gonna try. Uh, oh, the uh, that's right. The Primatech is a Daniel Smith one that claimed it's all made of genuine. Turned out they that they have other pigments in there as well that they didn't. That's fair. That's fair. I forgot about the Primatech. I don't think I have any of those. Well, it's unfortunate. But that stuff happens with pretty much any company. And I like the paints, so I'm going to keep them. And it's not like I'm selling my work, so. Not super worried about. Not super worried about light fastness in a coloring book. And if I really wanted to use those colors and sell my work, I would just digitize them. All of your favorite reds are fugitive. Badge. 
But anyways, how was everyone's weekend? I'm going to need something under this because this blue well is over the some hole on here. Off in that in it all over my desk. Yeah, I'm not too like too worried about it for color book. Red is the opening color overall. I used to do stained glass, and the red glass was the most expensive. And pop. that's weird. Wonder why, like why that is. Guessing pigments and whatnot. Yeah. If you, uh, like, I, I wouldn't use Moonglow in a, like, a commission if I was going to give somebody the straight up, like, actual copy of the work. Oh, Mrs. French, I'm so sorry to hear that. Salesperson told me with I was being made with God, lol. Uh, made with made with gold, but sure won't worry about light on a glass object likely to be in the in the sun. Yeah, <laughs> made with God, imbued with the power of the Holy Spirit. That's some, some mighty glass. Oh, this paper is making me, well, um, well, frustrated. I would like this to get to where it doesn't look too garbage but also I don't want to in the paper Stardust, I'm so sorry to hear that. I got some heavy life stuff going on. But it's good that you uh got coloring and art to take your minds your minds occupied. Um, I mean, I have guess so. Um, I just didn't really feel like putting it on 
I mean, I'm going to make it work. This isn't the first time I've done this, so. I just uh, didn't have the uh, the time to pair the page. And I'm not like that fussed about it. I just have to be careful. So like this area right here, I can see it's pilling up. So I'm just not going to hit that area. If I let it, uh, if I let it dry or hit it with the heat tool, then I can come back in and glaze over top of it. So. I accept the risk. I could always, um, I could also, when it's or I come back in, in like some of these areas up here where it's a little, a little rougher, come back in with some gouache and clouds, some of that out. Just have to be. Yeah, it's um, it's you know it's different, and I mean this book is quirky anyways. T. Um, this is the uh, I don't think you were here when I showed this. Um. When I got it, Mrs. French, but it's the uh this is the Elmerish Elmerish Jam Jam um coloring book. It's a Korean coloring book. But yeah, I don't I don't mind the um texture too much. I could also just be a little more intentional with it and rather than continue to like try and smooth things out um into it a little a little bit and make it look a little more textured. Uh wish more companies would make watercolor uh Adult coloring books that would be better for accepting watercolor paints and watercolor that yeah that's fair i mean i know there's some out there a lot of them are kind of like geared more towards like tutorial type type books but i get why uh i get why publishing companies don't uh it's ex expensive Uh, I didn't do a flip a flip through on it. We uh we looked at it in one of the uh the live streams shortly after I got it. Can't remember which live stream it was. Um. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna try and be a little bit more careful with doing flip throughs on some of the books, especially if they're uh 
difficult to to find like the uh the cat coloring book that I did um I feel like a few people down like thumbs down that video because they've tried to find the book themselves and couldn't because it's kind of a difficult to, book to find and the person that uh that I got it from it was like their last copy Okay, so what I want to do umbrellas. I'm just gonna quick what I can find. I was looking at food carts wrist just to give myself an idea. Street food cart. They all have awnings, but none of them are. Okay, I think I've got an idea. I am going to go with. Favorite yellowy orange. Hey, Linda, how are you? You going? I don't need a new coloring book. Um apparently there are uh there are two of these books. One of them is a uh travel book. And I came across that one over the weekend. And um I had it my cart on a random website and I realized that it would have cost me a bit um about as much as the book. Oh, uh, you too, T. Have a good uh have a good day at work. Don't work too hard. Thank you for stopping in. It was good to see you. Yeah, I definitely don't need um books either but i do have a couple um have a couple on pre-order of uh kirby's new um book should be a so i should have a 
of that for you guys um, Thursday. Okay, yeah, you know what? I'm going to um I'm gonna lean into the the texture this paper is giving me because um let me just carefully look guys because like if you look at some of the pre-color images that they that they gave it's kind of got that texture anyway. So I think I can still, um, I can still come out with, uh, oh my goodness. Hold on a second. Okay, I'm back. That was not the phone call that I thought it was. So I've been um, getting phone calls from um, their upgrading the, uh, the gas and electric meter in my area, and apparently, like, they stopped in. Nobody in the door because I didn't know that anybody was going to. Like that anybody was coming, so they've been trying to call me to uh to um to set it up to come in and install the new meter and like relentlessly calling me. So finally I called yesterday to uh try and set up the time for them to come and of course it's a please leave us a message we'll call you back within one business day and i'm like they're gonna call as soon as i'm live i just know that's how it's going to how it's going to and so that's uh i th what i thought who i thought calling and it was it was not it was a it was a scam Amazon uh, phone call.
Trying to decide now what uh, color I want to do the other. I'm just going to go with hot dog color. Go with like a. This is probably mixed with some, um, some of the, uh, the Gansy Tambi paint, because I used the, uh, the palette to, uh, to mix for that. And I don't generally my watercolor palette in between projects. Yeah, it definitely picked up some paint from, uh, well. So, I like this brush. This is the number eight in my Craftimo uh, brushes. I like this one because I can fit for like a, a nice like flat wash, but also if I tip it up on its end, good for detail work too. And then I don't have to uh, necessarily swap brushes. I probably will swap brushes when I get to some of these down here, but... Yeah, they're pretty, um, pretty nice. I've been using these for, um... For a while now. 
they do a lot of uh, collabs with creators too. There's quite the variety of um, colors on the handles and um, they've expanded from just like round brushes and the strength setting every five minutes. I'm um I'm not sure like that's not on um on my end. That's like a YouTube thing. I'm not sure what is happening there, but um I'm not dropping any frames or I'm not getting any notifications that it's on uh, on my end, but I noticed um, I noticed the other day that it was doing that in Ryan's stream too. It seemed to be worse on um, on mobile, so. Unfortunately, I don't think there's anything that I can do on, like, on my end to, to fix that. Although, I guess, like, after I'm done, I can reach out to the creator team and say, hey, like, Is it, um, is it in conjunction with, uh, with an ad? Because I noticed it would happen, um, it would happen, uh, after an ad popped up. So it's in conjunction with the ads. All right. Well, that's that's good to know. Because then I can um, go back and tell them like, hey, because I have it set up um, so that they they do the auto ad placement. Yeah, I have the, um, the auto. And this is the, and this is the first live stream I've done since I've had access to being able to run on ads so it's kind of a a test stream
Since they made an update, it's messed things up. I'll have to, uh, what I can figure out. Yeah, which is um kind of like if they if they want to make money off my stream probably be in their best interest to, you know, But that's unfortunate. Like, as a content creator and also as a, like, a watcher of... A watcher of the streams. Uh, I just don't go on random streams anymore because... It's yeah, it's, that's... And that's sad because... It does nothing for YouTube or the, like, or the creator. Uh, anytime copyright music is played on a live stream. Uh, here on YouTube, we're we're not talking about copyrighted music. We're talking about the uh, we're talking about the the stream just stopping and having to like reopen YouTube. But yes, I'm aware that playing copyrighted music uh, demonetizes your, your channel. Or demonetizes your video. And it's like intermittent. It doesn't happen all of the time. But I definitely noticed that it was uh, worse on... It was worse on mobile for me the other day. Than, um, than on the computer. And when it did happen uh, uh, watching on the PC, it was easier to like to fix than it was on my phone. So apparently it's not every stream and it's not um, for every viewer. Because, yeah, um, I, 
I did notice it was worse when um when Ryan was using uh was using StreamYard. So I don't know if that was like StreamYard trying to like insert something in there or I honestly don't know. On your PC and haven't, uh, haven't seen this at, I don't know. Like, I set it up so, um, the, the max time between that I could shouldn't be any, it should be like be like a 30 minute timer between We all have different advertising profiles. It makes sense that we have different experiences. Yeah, I and that was another option. It, it gave me to uh, allow it to like randomize the ads, so not everybody gets them at the same the same time, um, and get uh, get things based on like your own viewing profile. But, like, honestly, I don't really want to talk about the ads anymore. Like, I will um, see what I can figure out as far as, like, the viewing experience and why it, like, kicks you out of the stream. Like, I can reach out to the, the, the partner um, creator, like, support. But, like, beyond that, I don't, I don't really want to talk about ads anymore. Look at this painting I'm doing, you guys. Hey, 
Hey, Cookie, thanks for the lurk. I appreciate it. Uh, a good square sketchbook. Any advice? Uh, do you are are you are you on a budget, Stardust? Are you looking for something? Or um. Or are you willing to splurge? In what medium? Yes, also a good question. Uh, am I going to use colored pencils over the watercolor? Nope. I am going to keep it as it is. Um, I like Ohuhu's sketchbooks. Uh, if you're looking for watercolor, uh, these aren't really budget friendly, but, um, hold on just a second. But if you're looking for something that's good watercolor, I like the Etcher sketchbooks. They are a little on the pricey side, but um, I just bought a bundle of square sketchbooks for 90 bucks for three. And that's what I'm doing my uh, supernatural scene study in. Watercoloring fascinates me. It's, um, it's, it's different. And thank you, Mrs. French. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm trying to think. I think my other sketchbooks I have are geared towards markers not watercolor but i know that people i can't let me see if i've got if i've got one um elo makes nice sketchbooks as, as well and these are pretty inexpensive um i've used gouache in uh in my elo sketchbooks so this might be an option as well The um the etchers are uh are kind of expensive, but um the Elo sketchbooks are nice and you can find those on Amazon. That that might be a better option. Uh 
I went with the um, the etchers for my last um, my last set of sketchbooks because I knew I was going to be doing a lot of uh, a lot of water mediums. But if, um, if Sonia says that the Royal Talons are good, I trust her, uh, I, I personally haven't used any of the Royal Talons sketchbooks, but... I mean, water blocks are nice, but she, but she's specifically looking for a sketchbook. Yeah, there's definitely um, cheaper cheaper options out there. Oh my god, what? Oh, maybe next time I'm in the market for sketchbooks, I'll pick up uh, some of the Royal Talons. Try them out. I think the, um, hold on, let me see. Elos don't have the perforations either, but I think the, um, the Ohuhu sketchbooks might. I don't have a, I don't have a, one of my Ohuhu sketchbooks, like, um, close by. Okay, I think I've kind of found a rhythm with this paper.
Cheryl, how are you? Welcome on in. How's your day going? That's... I do. I picked up some blue. Tell it. We're on my brush. You know what? Somebody spilled mustard on the... <laughs> we're just gonna go with... Just gonna go with somebody spilled mustard on the counter. <laughs> Birthday's coming up, so looking for something uh, fun and affordable. That's always nice. Art supplies for birthday gifts. Especially when you buy it yourself. Happy accidents? Yeah. Happy accidents. We'll, we're just going to roll with it. Mustard. <laughs> Perfect save. I'm a professional. I mean, look, there's already, like, there's already some, some, some spillage right here. So let's just even it up. Last customer was a little messy. We'll just, you no. Know, we're just gonna, um, we're just gonna roll with it. Happy accidents. Uh, no, I don't want that. Go with the handsaw. To find a place on the pallet. That's that. Not what I wanted at all. Oh, why the truth is look. Sorry, good king. What would our buddy Ryan have done? I, I don't know. Too. Less than nine months till Christmas. I know, all right. We got to get in the spirit. Let's just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my thin real quick. I'm really happy with how, um, how my pretzels turned out.
I need to be a little bit more um more coordinated, I think, with my um what colors I am switching be between. But it's about it's about break time, so I have to go and change my water out anyway. I have two things of water here, and I keep forgetting that. Uh, I have one that's supposed to be my clean water and one that's my dirty water. Yeah, I am enjoying this um, a lot more now that I've kind of stopped trying to like smooth everything out and treated it more like a like an illustration um, and not being so focused on it looking smooth. And also not being super worried about um, filling all the white space, which is a really difficult thing to do. I, for me personally, like when I'm using watercolors, is to remember that um, I don't need to fill all of the white space. Oh, thank you, Sonia. I appreciate that. Like, I'm enjoying it. It's it's nice to get back into um from that I haven't in um in a while. I kind of look like the um the unpolished look. And just getting reacquainted with this palette again. I've been um I've been experimenting in different uh, areas with the the channel. I started trying to make my own um get into making my own thumbnails because it would be super nice to be able to um not have to pay for the uh the the Canva membership and just have the free there as a a backup cuz honestly like I am I'm tired of paying for subscriptions like everything is a freaking subscription and it's incredibly frustrating um so I have a couple painting projects that I want to work on 
but they're on a bit of a like a larger scale and so um my plan was to do my concepts in procreate and then print them out and use transfer paper to get my um my sketch onto my surface and adobe uh acrobat allows you to it gives you like a a poster format option so that you can print on multiple pieces of paper and then you can kind of like fit them together on your like on your surface but apparently the adobe acrobat's not free now and i'd have to pay an extra 22 dollars a month just to have the option to like well i mean i'd be able to use it for gaps and whatnot but um just to be able to print in like poster poster sizes when i already have a um uh, a photography subscription on adobe and i can't just like a la carte another program for an extra five bucks on top of that i've got to pay another 22 dollars And then of course, like the program I use to edit, if I want access to like any of the premium like assets, I've got to pay another subscription for that. Unless you send me something every month, I don't want to subscribe. Yeah. I, and then I just, like, I feel like um, I lose, like, I lose track of them. You know, like. And even though I'm in, like, going into my bank account and I'm my budget. Because right now, all of that stuff comes out of, like, my, my regular account because i don't make enough doing this to be able to pay my expenses like out of my my business account which then makes it like difficult to like track my track my expenses yeah, that's, I'm sure that's, um, and I, I'm sure, like, you guys have seen that, like, for, um, uh, Rocket Money, help you find hidden subscriptions. Oh, yeah, look at those buns. I'll have to come back and mix up a hot dog color. Um, I haven't seen it do it, but have any of you guys seen uh, the camera flicker at all? I mess around with a couple things and like I'm still getting the, the little message that makes it like my um, my camera's overheating. But I did some research and some people said that apparently that's not like your camera is, is actually not overheating. If I turn this to photo mode it'll be perfectly fine. So I took the SD card out and made sure that the screen was flipped up and then I swapped to a different um, USB port because I'd wondered if maybe USB port that I was using wasn't powered enough to, to run um, 
to run this, so I have to keep an eye on it. But I haven't noticed it, uh, I haven't noticed it flickering, so... Okay, uh, I'm gonna take a quick break and go make sure that the cats are good. Um, and make myself, uh, a hot beverage. But first, I'm gonna make sure this isn't like Christmas music. Okay, it's not Christmas. All right, guys, I will be right back.
Okay. Back. That takes a little while. I have to, um... So, one of our cats had all of his teeth removed last week. So he's still in the uh, recovery period. So, and I have to soak his uh, dry food. Because uh, he is not a fan of the, the wet food. Oh, let's see. All right. I need to mix up a bun color. Actually, I don't really want this over here because that's just a recipe for... Just a recipe for dipping my paint in my... He's, um, he's been doing all right. He's, uh, passed the, uh, they gave him, a, a four-day, uh, like, opioid post-op, but she said his surgery went, went really well. Most of his teeth came out, um, super easy. There was one she had issues with that, um, that broke. And so she had to kind of dig a little bit to get the root out because with the condition that they believe that he has, like you have to get like every piece of, um, of tooth. Like you can't leave anything behind. So, um, there was that, um, the first night was a little, a little rough, but he was, he was willing to eat, but he was, because they had him later on the schedule and they don't have staff overnight, I had to, uh, to pick him up. So he was not quite as awake as they would have, um, liked him to be. Um, no, he had it, um... A condition called stomatitis which they he was largely autoimmune and basically his immune system was uh having an over exaggerated response to like bacteria and plaque that are on the teeth and causing just horrible like inflammation of um of his gums um and lesions inside his mouth it's um apparently incredibly painful like if you chewed on barbed wire and so um he had a dental last june july ish shortly after we uh, adopted him and they removed one of his upper uh canine teeth and two of his molars at, at that point and then he was all right for a little while after after that and then we started having issues again a couple months ago and so um when i took him in for his well visit we talked about it and um scheduled him for another another dental and i kind of knew like going into it that um it was more than likely going to be like a full mouth extraction. So I like, I had time to prepare for it and do, you know, do some research because we did a round of, um, did a round of steroids to help reduce some of the inflammation. But as like, as soon as he was done with the course of steroids, you could tell he was just completely miserable. Uh, so, um, I took him back for his follow up, and she, uh, she thought that, um, there may be a couple that we could save and i was like yeah but if we play if we play that game then we could be in here again in a few months and then that's three anesthetizations that that he's got to undergo and she agreed um but then she also suggested two other vets in the uh um 
in the clinic that specialize in dentistry, dentistry that are a little bit faster when it comes to doing like full mouth extractions. Like they specialize in, you know, in dentistry. And um, both of those vets have worked on my other animals. So I had zero issues with having one of them um, do the procedure. And so sure enough, um, she calls me and She's like, yeah, I really don't like the way that a lot of these look and his gums are just like, they look awful. And then, you know, she said, there's a few that we could probably try and save. And at that point I was just like, just take them all. And she's like, I, I concur. She's like, I'll do whatever you tell me. And I said, let's just, just do the whole thing, get it over with. Um, is he getting pureed cat food? He's not really a fan of uh, wet cat food. So I've been soaking his uh, his kibble, his dry food, because he's on a prescription food anyways. Uh, so I've been soaking his dry food, and he really wasn't chewing uh, up until this point anyways. So he kind of just like slurps it up and then swallows it. And um, a lot of cats, once their mouths fully heal, are able to actually go back on uh, dry cat food. Either their jaws will harden to like to compensate, or they'll kind of just um, pull the kibble to the back of their mouth and like swallow it. Cats don't really use their um, their teeth to like chew like humans do. It's more to like shred. But um, his attitude has been just like a completely different uh, cat. He's been much nicer to everybody else. Very affectionate. And um, I'm I'm guessing that this has been something that he's probably had. For quite some time and just nobody picked up on it. Apparently like they they can live with this condition for like years but obviously his quality of life was um was impacted. Not in constant pain. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it stands to reason that he would have, because he has another autoimmune condition. And the thing with autoimmune conditions is, um, they, they like to bring their friends to the party. So typically if you have one, there's, there's others. That's kind of how I, I like to, um, I mean, he just kind of, um, he popped up in my, in my feed and we had just gotten Lorna. So I had a nine week old, nine, 10 week old kitten and we had just lost our other big, um, uh, tuxedo cat. And there was just something about his, about his face when I saw it in my, in my feed. So I sent the picture to my husband and he's like, if you want to go get him, go get him. And so I was like, well, let me, you know, I've got some stuff that I need to drop off over at the, um, you know, the Humane Society. Let me, you know, I'll go over there. I'll, I'll meet him. And our Humane Society does, uh, like, um, they let you do like a two week sleepover. So it's like a trial. And, um, you know, they talked to me a little bit about, his backstory and how rough he was when he came into the, like, into the shelter. And, uh, and then they put us in, uh, in one of the little viewing rooms. And when I decided that I was going to bring him home on the, the trial run on the, the two week sleepover, I went and got the kennel out of the, out of the car and I brought it in and set it down and, um, and he went like he went right in it and so the 
the volunteer at the shelter comes in. She's like, oh, apparently, like, he's ready to go. And I said, apparently. And so um, he was on uh, medication that I need to put him back on. But it's like the people who make this stuff, it's like, do you, you never owned a cat? Like, why would you make a medication that smells like straight up paint thinner? And so, um, he's very, very difficult to, like, to medicate and to handle, and he's a big boy. He is, um, almost 18 pounds. And so, I've, uh, like, I'm no stranger to having to medicate large cats, and I've been kicked by rabbits before, but he is something else will um will grab the syringe and try and pull it out of your hand and just whip his head around like a freaking shark and so um we brought him home kind of in the midst of uh i was getting ready to go on like a four day uh real weekend and it kind of like coincided with um when his uh, sleepover would end so I had asked for a couple extra days and the first volunteer that I talked to uh, was like oh yeah we can we can do that we can do that and then when I called back to confirm the next person that I talked to was like well uh, we don't like to do that because then we lose track of them and I'm like I'm legitimately just trying to do what's in the best interest of you know of of the cat and um, I wanted some more time to try, you know, bond, like, bonding him with our other cats. And then, um, I realized, like, if I, if I took him back, that my recommendation would have been that he and only cat and go with somebody who was experienced in, um, dealing with with larger cats and cats with medical issues. And so I made the decision to like, I was like, I can't, I can't take him back. Like he'll end up at the shelter like forever, or he'll end up with somebody who doesn't, you know, isn't capable of meeting needs. And, um, and so I finalized his adoption and then he had his first dental and I should have realized at that point it, it, that his teeth were, were largely going to be, you know, an issue. Uh, he's not a Maine Coon. He's just a big, big boy. Uh, domestic short hair, tuxedo, tuxedo buddy. It's funny because I have, um, two tuxedo cats and, well... Um, Lorna has ta uh, tabby markings. Um, but she's, she's a mix, so. But both my girls are, um, tabby, torty. But I'm hoping, um, that, uh, that we keep going in in the positive direction that we've been going with him so i still have him on gabapentin but i'm hoping that we'll be able to wean him wean him off of that he's down to like once a day right now so i usually just give it to him in the evening but he's been okay you know about what you would expect for having all of your teeth removed But it was like the um the day after he was in the living room like just purring and rolling around on the floor and letting you touch his belly and i was like well
So it was, I mean, it was, you know, as stressful as it always is dealing with it, a health issue with your, one of your animals, but it is by far not the uh, grossest or most grievous issue that I've, I've dealt with. I just almost dipped my paintbrush in my... It just wouldn't be a watercolor painting if I did almost dip the paintbrush in my hot chocolate. But he's doing pretty good. But uh, the vet that did his surgery um, is the, the vet that made the comment to me a few years ago that um, I don't find my animals, they find me. I mean, our um, one of our female cats that we adopted um last uh last spring um came to me with a diagnosis of feline asthma and so looking through like the records and whatnot they gave me and just kind of trying to piece things together i was like you know i think they may have like jumped um jumped the gun with with this and so of made the uh made the choice to trial her like taper her off of the steroids and see how she did because i just wasn't confident that they were that they were right and so she's been off of the the steroids for a, a month or so um and i just feel like you know she could have been kept on a medication for the rest of her life that causes horrible side effects down the road that she might not have actually needed. You never have a drink on your desk and you pay. It's like, I, and I'm trying to like, I'm trying to look at like the placement of things on my desk. And... I have my, um, so my paint puck is like right here and then I've got my palette and then my mug with my drink is way over here, but cause I'm right handed, I have the paintbrush in my right hand and I'm reaching for the, the mug with my right hand. So it becomes like this thing to want to like dip my paintbrush in there. But then if I put my mug over here, then I have to like make sure I don't knock it over. I just like I'm I'm trying to like accept that I am outgrowing this space as like it's great as an as an office and to like come and sit in here and edit. But um in terms of like art and painting and things like that, I have outgrown the, the space. But I just, I'm not in a position to like rent a, a studio and I don't have any other like space in the house or unless it's in a bottle or a cup with a lid. Yeah, I'm going to have to.
Okay. So since I'm working down in this area of the book, I do believe it's time to mix up a skin tone. Let's see. I've got my permanent orange. Oh, new gamboge. You always trick me. All right. So I'm going to go with some gamboge. And some opera pink or berry orange, but that's okay. We're going to fix that. Or I don't know. We'll see how, how this goes. If I can, um, tone this down. Now that's a little gray. Let's go. That's not horrible. The touch. try this and see how okay so we need more water but I don't hate the way that looks it's a little brown but that's okay He's got a tan. And it'll dry lighter than it looks.
Oh, this is the, the music that sounds like it's from Toy Story. be nice to have like studio space that I should look and see so I have um I have an order from Jerry's that's supposed to be here today I don't think it'll show up while I'm still live still out for delivery. This is a very tanned hand. But this paper doesn't lift very well, so...
I have a pug color.
Emily, how are you? Going to the library to color? That sounds like fun. I'm thinking about um, on Thursdays going, working at the library. It is distracting here. Not gonna lie, that kind of looks like blood. Whoops. We'll, we'll add some mustard in. That will make it look a little less. adding the mustard yeah yeah and on a, and, and i'm hoping that like if people see this they'll be like oh hot dog hot dog ketchup mustard it's not a murder scene All I gotta do is pause.
my dog was sitting next to that hot dog and there'd be no frowny face. Yeah, especially considering, like, it's a pug. Unless he's, like, unless we're looking at, like, the eye line. And so he's, like, looking at the person, like, you better drop that for me, like, right now or share it with me. Because I feel like if it was, well, I mean, I lost her last year, but I feel like if it was my pug, that that would be, like, the, what, bro, you're not going to share? How rude. We just look next. Don't know how long you've been familiar with watercolors. However, I so envy your confidence. You just gotta go for it. Like I'm definitely like not an, an expert, and I mean, I don't, I can't really do. I mean, I could if I practiced, um, like pretty painting, but in terms of like, like illustration, I definitely have a more like illustrative style, but. Like, you just, you gain confidence by just doing it, you know? And I'd say I probably, I haven't used my watercolors in a while, but probably shortly after I started this, the channel, so about half years-ish. Be no ketchup and mustard drips on the ground either not a crumb yeah yeah oh, look up snapple logo that's old snapple logo But enough for me to see that the lettering is blue. That's to do. Although I want it to be a little bit more opaque, so I'm going to blazing. <sighs> but, um, yeah, you just gotta, I learn by by doing, you know, I just have to do it and play with it and make happy little accidents.
is on, are you? No. But little son does un does contract. Little too. But I find um, watercolor to be one of those um, mediums that is both frustrating but also forgiving. I think it's often said that it is one of the most difficult mediums to, I say master, but I don't really feel like I feel I, I really don't like to say that you can that, you know what I mean like like mastering something because there's always something new coming along and something to learn and I feel like it's I don't know But I, I think that um, part of the, part of the, like, just go for it with, for me, with watercolor is that there's a, a safety net in that, for the most part, as long as... I'm aware of the paints that I'm using and the paper that I am working on, um, that I can lift things up and push things around and correct things if I need it. And I mean, that's not always the case, but just knowing that that's an option, I think makes it feel a little less like daunting. I find, um, I'm finding gouache to be more difficult than, um, than watercolor. Thank you. 
don't know if anyone ever really masters watercolor, but it's not that hard to get um, decent as long as you're willing to let it do its thing. Yeah, it's it's like there's a level of control over it, but also just letting it letting it do its thing. Hey. hey Jen, how are you? Ladies usually have power outages storms this morning, but we're good now. Hope all is well. We're having a uh, a cozy paint stream. Glad your power is back. It's good to see you. I I just hesitate to use the word master with like anything. You no, know, like I know there's like master plumber, master electrician. And I just kind of look at that as like, well, cool. So you're really, really good at your, at your craft. Like, but again, I think that's just kind of the terminology that is applied. I feel like those people still like go to classes and they have to keep up with you know, new technology and um, new like laws and all that stuff. There's always something changing and something to learn. So, I think if I ever get to the point where I tell myself like, or or consider my consider myself like start talking about myself like oh I'm the best I'm I'm a master you know of whatever medium then then I then I'm not challenging myself to push further and I don't ever want to get to the point where I feel like I think that I'm better than you know I like to learn new things, so that's always, you know, at the uh, the forefront of. I think that's also part of the reason why I'm like careful with when I do tutorials, like how I word things, like. I don't ever want my tutorials to come off like my eyes are watering today. I don't ever want my tutorials to come off like my like my way is the end all be all. Because it is absolutely not. It's just, you know, the way that I have found that I like to do things and um and I think tutorials are only going to take you so far. You no, know, it's a jumping off point. And you should be taking whatever skill is being taught in the tutorial and figure out how to you know, how to make how to make it um make it your own, you know? Like just got a set of watercolor pencils by Art Artistro and it's definitely a learning curve. Yeah, it it definitely can be. It's, you know, it's kind of along the, the lines of like, and I, I've said it before, like, oh, I could never, I could never be as creative as so-and-so, or I could never do, you know, like, so-and-so. Well, I shouldn't be thinking about it in terms of, well, I could never do it like so-and-so, because I'm not so-and-so, you know? I should be finding ways to do it, like, that is visually appealing to me, and I don't believe that you're born 
I don't know how to like how to explain it. Are there some people that are born more like outwardly creative than than others, and it seems like they just pick things up and you know and roll with it, whereas some of us maybe have to work a little harder. Sure, but um, I think a lot of it just comes down to being in practice and um. Putting in the putting in the work there and say, oh, I'm not creative. I could never do that. But you don't try then. Yeah, you're never going to be able to do that. Kind of like, you know, when I first got into the military, I didn't know how to drive a forklift. I a little apprehensive to um, to get on a big giant piece of machinery when I had never Ever driven a forklift before? Absolutely. The, the fear of breaking something, you know, was was definitely uh, definitely there. But I had to learn, you know. So they threw me on a forklift, and I can drive a forklift now. I appreciate the kind comments, guy. I guys. I try, you know, like I'm not not perfect, but nobody is. Talent is nice, but it's not worth that much without the experience. I like I think um And sadly, I think there are a lot of art teachers school, um, that, and it's not just even with art, I think it's with a variety of like subjects that have a, a, a way of Turning people like off of whatever the subject is. I'm sure that if I had been nurtured a, a little bit more, um, I may have pursued art differently and more with more attention at a at a younger age. Um. But I think there are people that have the potential. It just takes them longer to, to get there. And if you're looking at it and telling a 12-year-old, you know, that their work is bad and that they, you know, like, I shouldn't say 12-year-old, but I guess... You know what happens to it's too but like a teenager who really really loves art but it takes them longer to grasp concepts and you're telling them that their work will never measure up rather than hey i really like how, what you did here do, you know asking them questions like do, what do you like about your piece what don't you like about your piece what do you think that you could do better what do you think you want to work on like you know and just shutting them down, um, I think is a huge part of the, the problem. And yeah, we all learn, learn differently. I do think that there are some people that, um, that pick up on, and I mean, it goes along with the learning, you know, the learning, like, because it does seem like there are some people that can just pick up a paintbrush or a marker and just you know, just produce, like, just stunning ever, you know, with seemingly no real, like, and I know they're putting in work, but it just seems like it, it comes out of some people. Some of us take a little bit longer and have to find, you know, um, but, yeah, I, I definitely had a, a few 
that were kind of like that. And art is so subjective, you know, like it should be more like, okay, well, I gave you a direction to to do linear perspective. Did you attempt to do the linear perspective? Yes. Did. Is it quote unquote perfect? No. But you made an attempt to do what was what was asked. And I think that's the better way to, to you know, to grade art in school rather than just on the end result of the piece. I had an English teacher that ruined poetry for me. Which is a big bummer. Uh, for me, it was an art teacher who kept you from quitting Kept you from quitting school and that's awesome that you know you had um a supportive you know positive role model i'm not saying that all art teachers are are that way but my college drawing professor was um was pretty cool i had to take introduction to drawing as part of my theater degree See, like, this is, like, now we're getting into, like, my favorite, my favorite part. The, uh, the detail stuff. I like the, the detail work, I think, the most. All the little, like, nitpicky. Only teacher name I remember after all these years. I wish there were more teachers like that. Uh, my art teacher, when I was a uh, freshman, was, I don't know, not supportive that I didn't take art again in high school. Not a good experience. Yeah, that that's unfortunately what um, I, I think happens to a lot of people.
stars and whatnot with a paint with a white paint pen at the end I do have some in here I can use flowers Oh, French Ultramarine, you are one of my favorites. Okay, yeah, I'm enjoying this a lot better now that I've stopped fighting the paper. Watch something the other week who said they don't like French Ultramarine. I was like, we can never be friends. Oof. That's like my go-to blue for mixing. Like, I haven't even touched the, uh, the other, the other two blues in the, uh, in the set here. Or in my palette. And part of me is like, why do I have you in here? I... Like, realistically, I could probably just cut this down to, like, six colors.
Put my hand in the pain. <laughs> You know what? Somebody spilled mustard on this sign. We're gonna go with that. Although I should probably not attempt to lift with my crappy freaking covered in paint rag. We're, uh, you know what? We're gonna roll with it. It's dingy. It's a street food cart. So we're gonna go with it. We're just gonna make the rest of it look like. There we go. This this food cart has seen some things. That is how we fix hand in the paint. I like it. Oh my god, so many hot dogs! Oh, there's a hot dog up here! Ugh, okay, alright, 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 alright.
Yes. Wet on wet. Go do your thing. Bread. Gonna add a little more yellow to the bun. Okay, I guess I'm gonna go with this. That's cool. That's cool. It's what's on the brush. What's wrong with it? Fine. It goes with the image. Goes with it. It is very chill.
Okay, guys, I will be right back. Uh, I'm gonna go check the mail real quick. Bathroom, and then when I come back, I think the only thing we have left is just some maybe little detail work, and then um, these signs up here. So I will be right back. A momento. Okay, 
I am back. Uh, thank you, Sonia. I appreciate that. I was a little apprehensive at, at first, but uh, once I got into it and just kind of realized like what I was what I was working with, um, So, uh, here, uh, she gonna I think I added something else this palette that, um, get on my sweatshirt. Oh, and then I'll need to take a picture for the thumbnail. Update the thumbnail. Oh gosh. Uh okay. Well you ma'am, I don't know how you got in here, but I knew Oh my god, she's stealthy.
Oh, we're glazing. I took that a little farther than I wanted to, but hey. I forgot how vibrant that all this was.
All right. Finishing line. I'm just adding in um, some Prussian blue to my my background in a couple areas just to give it a little bit of um, interest variation color. All right, I think that's it. Go ahead and get this out of here because I don't need that anymore. Uh, the satisfaction of finishing. This is this is another reason why I why I like watercolor because I can finish things. Sometimes I just need satisfaction of finishing a project and of course i mean like as i sit here and i mess with it and like it look at things you know but but it's like it's done and now i have that like endorphin boost of finishing a project so I am pretty happy with the uh, the way this turned out. Definitely, um, I definitely want to work in this uh, in this book again. This book is adorable. Um, a lot of fun. Uh, I don't know if I'll do like I'll watercolor in here. Actually, you know what? I might. Now that I have an idea of like how the the paper behaves, I can kind of like adjust my adjust my technique. But um, I really like the way this turned out once I loosened up with it a little bit, and I know the paper will straighten itself out once I close the book and put something on top of it. So let me pause the um the real quick because that is going to um. Thank you, Sonia. I appreciate that. How good is it? It's done in three and a half or so hours. Yeah. Yeah, it, exactly. Like, and if I, if I end up doing a completed pages video for this month, I actually have something there. 
I think I've got a um. Well, it'll with that being a February and March complete. I'll need to find some time to like sit down and um go through my stuff and see if I even have enough to do a complete. Oh, so, I guess if I do a completed pages video and clips, because I have um. I do have a couple clips that I. I don't know. I just need to find some time to my book. I've I've done merge. Although I'm thinking, did I? I finished the grasshopper this this month. I finished the pomegranate. I feel like I already showed the pomegranate page in a yo. Maybe I showed it as a. I, I don't know. I'll just, I'll need to go back and look at the videos on the channel. Um. And look at what I, it, it, it turned out. I definitely think I lean more towards the, like, this, this style of painting than, like, pretty painting. I kind of noticed that with, um. Like even with, even with this, I feel like there's a, like, it's not pretty, you know, and I'm okay with that. I think it's definitely, you know, more like illustrative. But I had a lot of fun with this one. Okay, so I gotta figure out what brushes are gonna need. You know what? These can all go. Have a a wash in. So, uh, with that being said, that is going to wrap things up for me today, so that I can go and mellow out and have a snack. Um, Lonely Book Club comes back next week, so look for more info on that. Um throughout the once I take photos and um oh maybe I'll do that and spend an hour tomorrow taking photos for thumbnails and then I'll go to the library and work over there and just make thumbnails it not at my desk I don't know we'll figure it out but more info on only book club coming later this week that will be our first stream of April um, I should have another, uh, object, single object tutorial, uh, video out, uh, working back in Magical Earth, uh, for this weekend. And I mentioned at the beginning of the stream, I'm hoping to have that wrapped up by the first, uh, first week of, of April. I'm trying to decide as far as the background goes, if I'm going to do something different with the background on it because I really don't want to do a tutorial a background tutorial using the pencils I'm just not I'm not really a fan of doing backgrounds with pencils unless there's smaller spaces that page has a fair amount or smaller spaces and that page has a fair amount of like open open space um so I've been mulling around I did get some of the moon um, water soluble oil pastels so I was thinking of doing the background on that one with those and then trying to curate a polychromos uh, palette uh, for it so if people want to keep working with their polychromos on that that page they have an option um, I'll just have to find the time to sit down and actually all of that together um because i will be i'll be here this weekend then the following weekend uh will be i will be out of town for other jobs so. um and then i have some ideas of uh for videos for um for april um, I do have a new coloring page that I will put up first first Friday as per usual. So that's ready to go. 
thank you guys for hanging out. I super, super appreciate all of your support. I will, um, I know that some of you that had issues with the stream stopping and it was kind of in like correlation to, you know, to, to ads running and you had to like pop out and come back and pop out and come back. So I will reach out to uh, the partner coordinators and if they can give any insight on why that might be happening and if anything that they recommend um, as a fix. If I find out anything, I will let you guys know. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. Oh, uh, you'll have a flip through either tomorrow or more than likely Thursday uh, of Kirby's new Reflections book. Um, my copy is actually out for delivery today, but I don't think I will get it out until Thursday. So that's coming as well. Thank you guys. I appreciate you support. And I will in the next one.